We're going to tie an ant. We like ants. I just want to be like Lance. I want to drink Gatorade and play basketball like Lance. That was a Michael Jordan joke. Not not very good one. No, um, we fished a lot of ant patterns last summer, and uh, the bionic ant is phenomenal. But just for fun, I had to play with a different pattern. And this one actually did pretty well. Um, this one... Uh, involves some foam and some CDC and some hackle. So, you know, this one is going to make the purists really second guess whether or not they, they like this. But anyway, this is a Gamakatsu S10. It's a little bit longer shank hook. Um, and I, I'm doing this on a 12. I've done these all the way down to a 16. And uh, they, they work really well. Anyway, I'm just going to Take some black 70 denier thread and wrap. You just kind of dress the whole hook. And I'm going to take some Evazote foam and kind of tie it in. There's going to be a bump in the back of, this, of the body of this fly. And I'm going to tie this in just right where that bump is going to be. Really cinch that in well. Now, for the body of this fly, instead of using black, we're going to mix the two colors, kind of a cinnamon and a black. So any dubbing that you have that's fine, that's either labeled cinnamon or rusty dun or, or a rusty spinner, any of that. I got whiting rusty dun in my brain right now because it's an awesome color. And this stuff's cool. This is actually beaver dub that I'm using because um, it, it will uh, spike out just a little bit. I'm getting kind of messy. But the idea is I'm going to build up a, just a ball of dubbing. Okay, so we just have a little bit of dubbing here. Now we're going to take this foam and just pull it straight over the top. We're going to tie that down. See how that kind of has a, a nice bubble shape to it. And I'm going to try to wrap my thread back into this bulb to, you know, further form it. So once I have this done, I'm going to take my thread all the way to the front of the fly. Well, almost to the front and I'm going to stretch this foam Son of a okay yes this looks a little bit different I pulled too tight on my thread and cut through the foam and had to start over so here we are ball of dubbing foam over the back this time when I pull it forward I'm not going to stretch it too much but I'm going to advance my thread to about right here and I'm going to stretch my foam just a little bit <clears throat> okay so I've got the foam bound down as you can see all the way up to the eye of the hook and on this one I'm going to do the same thing I create a little uh, ball of dubbing smaller than the back one and I'm going to pull the foam back now creating a little ball of foam this way so there's our little antness so I'm going to put my scissors in here and stretch this foam and trim it off okay so at this point I'm going to just kind of cover this foam up as best I can it's not super critical but for the sake of the video we'll We'll do it, creating that skinny connecty piece. I think that's the scientific term for it. So here's our ant body. Looks pretty killer. You could even do this with like bright red dubbing and it will look awesome. So now, because we're going to make this a flying ant, I'm going to take three pieces of CDC and line them up by the tips just like that 
and I'll tie those going back over the body. Just like that. So I'm going to wrap forward a little bit and then take the rest of these. Well, I'll wrap forward so you can see there's kind of a band of thread here. Then I'm going to take my, my uh, thread and go to the very back, right where I tied that wing in. And this is, because I'm going to wrap, I'm going to pull the CDC over and wrap over the top of it like that. I don't want my thread to slip off the front like I just showed you, like this. So the way to avoid that is you use some skull wax. So I'm going to take the skull wax and I'm just going to get a little bit of it on my thread and now it will bite down wherever I wrap it. So I'm going to pull those back. I'm going to bite it down and that will make that wing go back kind of more of an angle instead of just straight up. And then just advance your thread right into the front of that wing. So there's a little tie-in point. Now I'm going to come in here with my scissors and trim those at an angle. And it looks like we we kind of just meant to tie a clump in there. It's a super durable way to use CDC. Okay, now for the the best part of it all is the hackle. So we have these special whiting capes. Um, and what it is, it's a it's a a ginger dyed over a salt and pepperish variant. So it's not quite grizzly and it's not quite plain. It's just kind of speckled a little bit. And so we're calling this the cinnamon pepper variant. And it's a nice gingerish color, really cool for ant patterns like this, um, caddis, all different types of things. So we'll show you what it looks like wrapped. So I'll just take a, a piece of hackle, tie it in right in front of that wing. And I'll just wrap that with touching turns. Right about to there. So you can see there's still some good space between the the head and the butt. Get rid of all those fibers. And you can smooth that up and make it super clean if you want, but that's that's about as clean as you need it for fishing. So I'll whip finish that and then come underneath it and trim it flush so it rides nice and low. So there you have it, a little kind of honey ant variation of a flying bug that probably still doesn't fish as good as a bionic ant, but it sure catches them. <laughs>